I was given the gift of inherited trauma. I wasn't firsthand, I wasn't in Auschwitz, but the inherited trauma, the anxiety, the difficulty in creating a life, the belief that you can, the strength. What other story is there? You know, I'm a Holocaust survivor's daughter. Uh, the bar for living for me was raised very high no childhood. You absorb their anxieties, you absorb their heartache, you try to be really perfect, looking at their faces, trying to make them happy, trying to make life good. And for a long time, I felt very sad for them, really sad, like really sad. And then, all of a sudden, as I got older, really just maybe in the last 10 years, I think, wow, their strength imagine surviving that horror, that tragedy, and coming to a new country, learning the language, being successful, working hard, the message is you can survive. Having had a mother who survived Auschwitz at 21, but insisted on talking about the beauty of her life before the war, and as the only daughter, wanted me to live that life of beauty, and it became my life's work as an artist and a writer. I'm very interested in the survival of beauty. In 1979, I became obsessed with my father's number tattooed on at Auschwitz, A3146, which I'm sure I had seen my whole life, but felt like I had never seen, and did close to 300 works with that writing. And the paintings got completely black. I just let it go as long as I could, and then all of a sudden I was finding light in the work. And from then on, I think the search has been towards light. Every single work was acquired by a priest, by a museum. By, and what that taught me is from then on, the only way I can work is from my heart. Art is a powerful language. And it's not a threatening language. You don't have to hit anybody over the head with it. You either enter it and are ready to hear the music, the poetry, the primo levies, the Elie Wiesel's, the literature written, the films made. What's interesting about my doing the Holocaust series in 1979, it was before Schindler's List, before Holocaust museums, before there was just such a personal need to express what had happened. I'm always amazed, you know, when people come to openings of mine or museum exhibitions and I see and you know, somebody's wiping away a tear or somebody's smiling or... Uh, my art has been a vehicle for expressing love. It's not enough anymore to just remember, you know, to saying never again is fine, of course, but to commemorate it and then to move on to how do we move on, and for me, it's been through painting, through lecturing, through traveling, through talking to minorities, believing in the freedom of fear. Uh, I think it can, look, you either get up or you lay down, and I was taught to get up. My father, to this day, if I call him with anything that to me is like a great big deal, he'll say, Mindala, if you live a life, things happen, period. And that's how he lives his life.